Come with me to Napa and Sonoma Valley. Mr. Cheesy Pop. Hey everyone, it's Max. Welcome to my Napa trip. Um, something I've never done for you guys is taking you along on a trip up to Napa Valley. And on this trip, I'm hitting Napa Valley and Sonoma Valley. And uh, I'm actually going to wineries that I've never been to before. So this is a, a really exciting trip for me. And I thought, now of all times, is gonna be the time I take you guys along for the ride. So come along with me as we hit up a few wineries along the way, taste some amazing wine, and uh, show you what that whole experience is like as uh, I spend a whole bunch of days up here in Napa and Sonoma. Just to give you guys an idea of where I'll be heading on this trip. So I'm starting actually um, today in Sonoma and I'll be heading to Napa and then heading up north towards Calistoga and then I'm gonna wrap around to Healdsburg. So it's quite a little journey that um, I'm taking around here and you can see like on the map what that actually looks like. So we're starting our journey right here at Sebastiani and this is right in the town of Sonoma. Sonoma is this really just quaint little town full of little shops and restaurants. It's like a perfect little weekend getaway, peaceful. Um, and Sebastiani is right in the town basically, just outside of it. So uh, I've never been here before, so we're gonna head on in. So here's the tasting area, which is where I will do my tasting shortly. But they said, go take a tour around this whole area and, and check it out, because this is the world's biggest barrel back here. Whoa, there it is. Okay, so yeah, that is the world's biggest barrel. <laughs> uh, that's insane, oh my gosh, wow. I mean, I can't even get it in the shot, that's, that is, <laughs> That's amazing. I gotta ask them about that. Okay. Um, look at these barrels. They're really old. Oh, look. Original equipment used by Samuel Sebastiani from 1904. The original tank. Oh, how neat is that? Mm. I love wine because there's so much history behind it. When you're drinking something, you're drinking a piece of history. Let's do that. Hey, Christopher. <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> this is who I'm learning all of my knowledge from today. Heavy-handed pours. Love it. <laughs> so here's the tasting menu here at Sebastiani. And uh, Christopher takes me through it. The first one is this rosé, 2021 rosé. And a cheers to you guys. Mmm, mmm, mmm. It's really nice. Mmm, very watermelon. That's what I'm mostly getting on this. That's neat. The next wine here is a Chardonnay. I don't typically love Chardonnay. Um, often too buttery for me. This has got nice, like, apricot notes and, and things like that. I, I wouldn't say that it, you know, it is as buttery as a lot of Chardonnays. And it, it's because it depends on the barrel. This barrel is 27% new French oak. So this is the whole thing. The, the, the barrel that it's in could change everything. This is part of the tasting experience, guys. This is why you get five things here, you taste them, you see what you like, and then you buy a bottle, hopefully. So this one's a Barbera. Um, this is your classic Italian kind of house table wine. And uh, it is super light. Just easy drinking. You know, you bring this to your party. So this is the Sangiovese, and uh, compared to the Barbera, which I just had, which Barbera is very light. This one, your mouth is just going crazy. It's all these different kind of, ooh, ooh, ooh. The mouthfeel of wine is such an interesting thing. So when you guys drink your wine, pay attention to what it's doing to your, to your lips, to your, like up here, to your cheeks. This is one of those wines that, that does a million things to your, to your mouth. It's so fascinating. Final one of the tasting is this 2019 Gravel Red Bed. It is a blend, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and a touch of Barbera. And it's just delicious, huh? Oh, man. Really fruit forward and just lovely. I... 
I've been really feeling the blends lately, so mm, I like this one a lot. And it is very, very fruit forward. Great tasting here at Sebastiani. I'm going home with the Barbera. I, I just felt like I'm gonna make some pasta and have this at some point when I'm home, since, you know, I love to make pasta. Uh, but this is perfect with that. So, great time here. Thank you so much, Christopher. Thank you. For really coming. appreciate it. Appreciate having you. Wave goodbye. <laughs> Heading out with a bottle of wine. That's the great thing about tasting. I didn't know going in that I was gonna go home with the Barbera, but uh, that was my favorite. Yeah, all right. Great first stop of the trip here at Sebastiani. So I was talking briefly about the little town of Sonoma and I just wanted to take you guys there uh, because it's literally right down the street from Sebastiani. Um, and there's this uh, town square. So here's the square, it's a lovely park and it's surrounded on all sides by these um, little shops and restaurants and it's just lovely. And there's a ton of history here too. Like right across the street here, we've got the Mission San Francisco Solano. Um, and you can see what this town looks like. It's, it's adorable. I mean, look at it. I wanted to take you into the park here because this is actually a monument that commemorates the raising of the bear flag on this spot. This is where, you could read it here, freedom of California from uh, Mexican rule. On July 9th, 1846, <laughs> the bear flag was hauled down and the American flag was raised here. So there's a ton of history right here in Sonoma. I crossed the street to the mission just to kind of give you guys a little peek at this. Cool. Northernmost of California's Franciscan missions. Here's the state park. <laughs> Sonoma State Historic Park. And these are historic buildings. And uh, it's just so neat. The history in here is just unbelievable. So right here, I'm standing on the foundation of uh, General Vallejo's house. So General Vallejo uh, was here to defend this area, the Pueblo. Um, but as US settlers arrived from the east, uh, the Mexicans here were outnumbered. And then that's when the, the whole flag thing happened over there. And uh, declared California an independent republic, 1846, and then California um, joined the United States four years later. So this is the foundation of his house. Um, and the only thing that remains here actually is the servants quarters, which are right here. Crazy history in wine country. As I was saying, there's all these little stores all around the plaza here. Um, and restaurants, and it's just so lovely and quaint. It's just really nice. You can see right there across the street, Sebastiani Theater. So they really have their mark all over this town, the Sebastiani family. I definitely suggest if you're up here in uh, the Sonoma area, you know, you come in here, you grab a meal, Girl in the Fig's an amazing restaurant. Uh, there's, there's a lot of really great places up here. Walt Wines is right around the corner. They got their tasting room. Um, and then of course, Sebastiani is literally down the road and there's a ton of wineries just all in this area. All right, well, um, I'm going to head now out of Sonoma and we're going to head into Napa, downtown Napa, which is just about 20 minutes or so away. It's a really short drive, so see you there. Hey guys, I'm in Napa right along the river. So this is the riverfront walk. There are various restaurants and whatnot along the river, which offer a lovely view. So I just wanted to walk you by this uh, for a moment. All right, after a quick little detour to show you guys the uh, river, which is downtown. I'll be back there later tonight, actually. Um, my second winery here today is Black Stallion. Check it out. So 
pretty. Look at this beautiful patio that I will be sitting at. I'm gonna be sitting right here. And uh, you got this gorgeous, gorgeous view back here. Look at this. Oh, I mean, you're looking at the actual vines here. Oh, look, here. So here's where we are. Napa Valley, right? So we're right here. You know, we came from right over around here, Sonoma earlier. And we're here. And then we're gonna make our way all the way up and around, you'll see. But here we are right now, this is awesome. And you can see how beautiful this is. Look at the mountains up there. So here at Black Stallion, they do this. You get a choice. So a mixed one, it's got whites and reds. This is only red. Um, these are their best ones. And this is the club tasting. I also have some uh, charcuterie, great. So, um, you know what guys, I might just... So here at Black Stallion, they give you all four of their tastings at once. And we've got, so a Pinot, Syrah, two cabs. Plus, what's this? <laughs> I got a little charcuterie. It looks like an adult Happy Meal, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, this is so cute. They give you some shortbread. We've got, oh yeah, we got our cheese. We've got our jam. We've got our crackers. And we got these little plates. Let's do it. I wanted to come over here and take my first sip of this Pinot right in front of the gorgeous vineyards here, right? Okay, so Carla explained to me that this is going to be a cab lover's Pinot because it's got a much fuller body than a normal Pinot would. And it is, like I'm tasting the normal Pinot notes, but yeah, much fuller body. Oh, I really like it. Cheese and wine, I don't need much more. Happy Max. Hmm. Cheers, guys. Tasting wine is so fascinating because sometimes the first sip that you have is not the one that you end up liking the most. So like uh, this Syrah, I had the first sip and I was like, mm, nice. But then as I ate my like cheese and charcuterie over here, it really just opened up, the flavor changed and it just became my favorite. So it, it's so fascinating always to, when you're, when you're tasting um, and give yourself the opportunity to really taste them and, and go through the entire experience. Because first I was like, yeah, it's gonna be the Pinot, but no, it's the Syrah. So check out this uh, truck as we head out. This is a 1946 GMC truck. It was bought by the uh, Indelicato family to haul wine in the 50s and 60s. How about that? Haul wine on the back of that. I'm hauling one bottle. Out of here, it's the Syrah. Uh, Carla was great, she took care of me. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm here the week uh, after Memorial Day. Really light time for crowds. You get some really wonderful one-on-one -on -one attention. Uh, and it, it's just lovely. Uh, so it, it, it's really cool. If you ever can, just take a break and head up here during a, an off time. It's really special. All right. Two wonderful winery experiences today. I'll see you later. I'm gonna go to my hotel now chill for a bit and then I've got dinner tonight with Vanessa. You guys know Vanessa. All right, I'll see you later. Hey guys, well it's dinner time here in Napa and I am in uh, downtown Napa and I am having dinner um, with some of my favorite people actually, Vanessa <laughs> and Robert. Um, and I'm gonna be here at the Oxbow Public Market. Um, Oxbow Public Market is really cool. There's a lot of different food stalls and there's also some restaurants inside. Uh, so I'll show you what it looks like. So you can see it's like this kind of place where you've got different stalls with food and drinks and beverages. And then there's four uh, restaurants in that building as well. So this is a cool spot. If you've ever been to Grand Central Market in LA, kind of that kind of feel. Um, different food stalls, shops and whatnot. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another day in Napa. And we are starting our day right here at the legendary Boonfly Cafe. This is uh, part of the Carneros Resort. I've actually never been here, um, but it is so well, well known for their breakfast. Um, so we're going in, Boonfly Cafe. I'll see you in there. All right, I'm sitting at the bar here, and uh, here's the menu. So they're really known for their donuts. Everyone always talks about these donuts. Um, here's what else they've got. 
Oh man, all right, I need some coffee. Okay, much needed. Cappuccino. Okay, um, I got a couple donuts coming on the way. So they come by uh, Baker's Dozen for 12 bucks, but he was like, oh no, you can get a couple. So I just got two. Oh, the donuts are here. Look at this. So these are the famous Boone Fly Donuts. Wow. Oh, wow. All right, let's do this. <laughs> okay, you have to start your whole, you gotta start a nap a day like this. They're so soft and warm on the inside, but there's like a, a touch of this crispy stuff on the outside. Oh, that's one of the best donuts I've ever had. The donuts with this coffee, just, yeah. Uh, wait till you see what I just ordered for uh, my meal. My food's here, and you're gonna be like... That is green eggs and ham. Oh yeah. Now we're talking. <laughs> How's this for something real different? Wow, that's so good. Wow. So we got our poached eggs, it's over the hash browns. Lemon leek cream, that's what's going on here. And of course the ham. This is so cool. Dr. Seuss would be so proud. Well, I am stuffed. You know, when you hit a wall, that's what I hit. That was super fun. Uh, what a great way to start my uh, nap of morning here. You know, uh, I think it's really cool to come to like good institutions, you know? Like this place has been around forever. Um, they, the, the, these breakfasts are like, you know, big portion home style, you know. I mean, yeah, so, but it's a great way to start your day, especially if you're gonna be drinking wine. You need to nourish your body. It's very important to always like keep eating and stay hydrated all day long when you're uh, wine tasting. After a great breakfast at Boone Fly, I'm walking along here on the Napa River. And uh, this is in downtown Napa. It's a really beautiful spot. And there's actually a place here that I've always been meaning to check out for the last couple of years. And it is Wilfred's. Wilfred's is not your typical Napa place. It is actually a tiki bar. What? A tiki bar in wine country? Yes. So I'm um, walking along the river and we're gonna pop in for a quick uh, beverage. Here's Wilfred's. <laughs> totally different vibe. Here it is. So you can see, I was just walking along the river right here. And uh, this is, <laughs> this is where it is. Let's go check it out. So here it is guys, you can see, look how cute this place is. Oh my gosh. Here's the menu and you can see all of your tiki drinks. They've even got your collectible mugs. Here's what I got, I got the Tahitian punch. So I'm gonna head up these stairs, look at this, okay. The bartender said there's a lounge up here. So I'm taking my drink up to the top. I wanna to see what this looks like. <laughs> oh my gosh, how cute is this? Look at this, oh my gosh. So we have this little like indoor spot and then there's this whole... Oh wow, see this is so cool. Look at this outdoor spot and it overlooks the river. This is amazing. Look at this, you got a, yeah. Um, how's the drink? Ah, oh, it's delicious. This is such a great spot to just, after your day of wine drinking, you're like, I'm done with the wine. This is so great. Look how chill this is up here. Are you kidding? Well, that was a really fun experience. That is such a cute place. And it's in like such an amazing location too. I'm headed now to a winery and I'm gonna meet a buddy of mine there too that I think some of you guys have seen before as well. Uh, I'll see you there. I'm on my way to the winery, but I had to stop and show you this, cause this is so classic. 
the big welcome to Napa Valley sign. There's actually two of these. Um, this one is um, on the southern part of uh, Highway 29. There's one uh, f uh, further north, uh, kind of like St. Helena, Calistoga in that area. But this is, uh, I think, the first one that most people see. Um, so people, you know, like to park on the side of the road and take their picture uh, right over here. It's, it's awesome. Check it out. It's the wine train. I love it. It's, it's the Napa Valley wine train. So the Napa Valley wine train is another thing that I have never done, but you hop on board. They've got a full on dinner wine pairing uh, that you could do. One day I will uh, get on that train and, and uh, experience that. It seems like a lot of fun. Uh, but I'm so glad I caught the train for you guys. All right. Let's uh, head uh, back on our journey. Uh, but I had to show you this, of course. And the wine is bottled poetry. Oh, wow, this is so gorgeous. <laughs> Wow. All right, I am here at Peju Winery. Um, this, this is gonna be stunning. Oh my. Wow. Yeah, okay, this is uh, gorgeous. <laughs> What am I doing? I'm, a, I'm on a, I'm on a tractor? Is this a tractor? What am I doing? Welcome to Napa Valley. It's Ian! Howdy. What's up? How you doing, my it's friend? It's Ian. Oh man, it is good to see you. It's good to see you, man, back in the vineyard. It's been- I'm back. I know, year, yeah, I haven't right? seen you in forever, yeah. I know, but I'll never forget, launching yeah. all my wines with me through uh, that dark time of COVID together. <sighs> yep. We, we, we got through it. We did, and now we get to spend time together again on the vineyard. We got yeah. our little babies coming out right oh, here. Oh, do we? Look at this. I think it's a time of rebirth. Oh, yeah. These will soon be that Cabernet is grapes. It. Cabernet grapes Napa right Valley here. Cabernet. Soon I will drink them. Yes. Yes. That's pretty cool. <laughs> like, look where we are, guys. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. Tractor's eye view. It's beautiful. So I had such a good time catching up with Ian there. Um, yeah, we just met up over here at Peju kind of chat, walk me through the vineyards, it was beautiful. Um, and now I'm actually gonna do a tasting. Uh, so you guys can actually see what the pastry tasting experience is like. Full bodied, rich, in, we call it rich in the mouth. So first up here is the Sauvignon Blanc. And uh, I'll tell you, this smells unbelievably, oh, it's beautiful, I'm getting, I'm getting some lime. Um, there's that lime, we've got some mango. Mm. Pineapple. I don't know that a Sauvignon Blanc gets much better than uh, that one right there. Wow. Mm. Rosé. This is a really nice rosé. I think I'm gonna like the Sauvignon Blanc better than this rosé, which is, wow. But it's still delightful. A perfect, perfect summer like what I'm doing right now. You're out on the on the patio kind of deal. Perfect. Uh, this place is, this place is so gorgeous. <laughs> Cab Franc next up. So the uh, Cab Franc is really exceptional. I, I mean, exceptional. Big, bald, hitting you in all the good spots here, man, that is. Mm, mm, mm. I wish I had some meat right now, you know, <laughs> but because that is perfect. Ooh. I just want to show you guys my view, by the way. It does not get much better, let me tell you. I mean, gosh. So here's the Cabernet Sauvignon. You know, you want to you wanna swirl that around, guys. Definitely. When you do this, this really lets you smell all of those notes that are going on here. We swirled it, now you wanna... Oh man, boy, that's delicious, yeah. I haven't even tried it, I know it's delicious because I can smell it. 
Mm, those dark, dark berries, you know, like blackberry. Uh... Mm, such a smooth Cabernet Sauvignon. Boy, that's delicious. Oh my. Uh, Peju makes exceptional wines. I, I, I gotta tell you, this is an exceptional place. The winemaking, and then just, the, I mean, you saw the grounds here are just, just stunning. It does not get much better than this. It is. Mm. So here we go. This is the Barrel EXP. So this one that they just poured me is the Barrel EXP. What is EXP? It's experiment. So this is the Cabernet Sauvignon, 100% Cab, that they have just kind of experimented with the barrel. And the barrel really provides so much of what you're smelling and tasting. Uh, and he was telling me, 90% French oak, um, American oak, the rest of it. But then there's also some Hungarian oak. And, and the, the, the barrel is really going to change the way your wine tastes. You know, they toast, they toast the barrels. Uh, and th th this is why winemaking is so unbelievable. So I love when winemakers have like a lot of fun. And this is the, the fun experimental cab. So boy, that's cool. Boy, I love it here. I don't think I drank it for you on camera. I had it when he was uh, talking about it. That's so neat. You know, I just had a cab, and now this one tastes totally different. That's... Well, that was a wonderful, wonderful afternoon here at Peju. Uh, they make some world-class wines. I'm leaving with one of them right here. I gotta say, this just makes me so happy. Being here uh, amongst good people, like Ian, uh, who I met up over here. Got to see the vineyards and drinking amazing wine. Uh, this is what it's all about for me. I love, I love this, and I'm so happy I'm here in the vineyards and sharing this experience with you guys. Look at how gorgeous, I mean, look at how gorgeous this is. Uh, it's just, yeah. Um, thanks, Peju. Thanks, Ian. Wonderful experience over here. Now it's dinner time. Italian tonight. Really looking forward to some Italian food tonight, so. I'm taking you inside my trunk because I wanted to show you guys this. So um, I just put the bottle that I bought right in here. So this is <laughs> a six bottle uh, carrying case and it's uh, perfect for your Napa trip. Keeps them uh, at a good temperature. So if you do come up here and you get, you buy some bottles, get something like this. Look at this beautiful, oh, look at that burrata and prosciutto. So I'm at Cook St. Helena. This is an amazing Italian restaurant. Uh, the locals know about this place, but not a lot of people do. But I'm so excited to try this food. It's amazing. Look at this beautiful food. Oh my goodness. We got... Mm, mm, mm. You have beautiful pastas in front of you <laughs> and a glass of wine. Tell me what you're drinking. Oh. Actually, this is, uh, they make this here. This is the Cook Red. Yeah, and yeah. who makes it? Cook. Cook? Do you think it's maybe Josh Phelps? <laughs> oh, thank you, Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> Amanda's filming, by the way. Hi, Amanda. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Give us a little swirl. <laughs> swirl. <laughs> Give a swirl. Swirl, sorry. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Swirl up. Okay, beautiful. Notes of plum and cassis. Hi friends, after a wonderful dinner at Cook in St. Helena, I'm now in the town of Calistoga. It's a little tiny little town north of St. Helena. Um, and it's just, it's adorable here. I'm gonna pop over here, check out the Hydro Grill, get a drink there. You can see that the mountains in the distance there, it is beautiful, wow. So I'm ending my night right here. A uh, little uh, just chill time at the bar right down the street from the hotel I'm staying in, I just walked over. Good chill way to end the evening after, uh, that was a really nice day, yeah. Welcome to another beautiful day in Napa Valley. Um, boy, weather's gorgeous today. Um, and I'm headed uh, to a winery I've never been to, 